All right, NFL Week 3 is here. As an Eagles fan, I am extremely fucking pissed off with what I've been watching so far. You give up eight sacks to the Washington football team in Week 1, and then they, whatever they, whatever you want to call that, last week against the Rams. But anyways, Week 3 kicks off Thursday night with Miami at Jacksonville. Jacksonville is three-point home favorites. 5-0 against the spread in September. The Jags are Miami, 10-4 against the spread. 2-14 straight up on the road. 0-7 straight up in September. Injuries, watch out for cornerback Byron Jones. I'm going to list a lot of players who got hurt last week. Now, obviously, I'm shooting this early Thursday morning, so I haven't heard all the updates yet. Watch out for Friday's final injury reports on all of the players that I mention in this today. Once again, all my betting odds I do get from Bet365. That is where I do my gambling on. I also play a little DraftKings. I started that this season just uh, about a month ago or so. Uh, the Jags in this one, I like a lot the way that Robinson, the, the young running back, has been playing and Gardner Minshew. I like the Jags to win in cover and the Dolphins, well... They just are the Dolphins. They're rebuilding, so I'll let that be. Next game, Chicago, plus three on the road in Atlanta. The Bears are one and five against the spread on the road. Nine and two against the spread versus Atlanta. One and four against the spread. And two and six straight up in their last five and eight games, respectfully. Uh, they're 10 and four straight up versus Atlanta, though. Uh, Teams play, these two teams play under the total a lot. So if you are an over-under player, I'm not. But uh, that is something you might want to watch out for. The under could be a good play on this game. 5-1 uh, and one is the Falcons against the spread in their last six. Give up that big, big lead. Wow, the Falcons have given up big leads. Uh, remember that from anywhere? Hmm, Patriots? Oh, wow, Dallas. A, a lot of credit to Dallas. I'll talk more about the Cowboys and give them some props later on when I get to their game. Atlanta, what a what a disappointment. I am rolling with the Bears to not only cover the spread, but to win this game outright. They are three-point dogs, but I don't care. They seem to be able to show up against Atlanta, and Atlanta just, after last week, I don't know mentally how they can be in the right place this week. Cincinnati, four-and-a-half-point underdogs on the road in Philly. Uh, Joe Burrow, the young kid at quarterback for the Bengals. See what he can do against Philly's defense, which, well, hasn't played good at all really over the first two weeks. Linebackers were a big issue. Play action, biting on bootlegs. Like, you know, with no fans in the stands, how don't you hear them big O-linemen grunting when it's a run? And their jerseys turning sideways when it's play action. Like, these little simple things. How the fuck are you not looking for them, Peterson? Players, defenders, like just so fucking frustrating as an Eagles fan right now. They're 1-5 and five against the spread in their last six home games. Doug Peterson and the Eagles, they do win a lot of games at home though. However, the Bengals are 9-0 against the spread versus Philly. They're 2-18 and 18 straight up in their last 20, however. 9-3-1 and one straight up against the Eagles. They're 0-3-13 straight up on the road. 22nd and 23rd passing yards per game, 26th and 29th in rushing yards per game. Those are the Bengals and Eagles stats, respectively. I like the Bengals to cover this game, and I, w I think the Eagles should win at home. And if they don't pull it off against the Bengals, I don't know how you can support them against anybody besides the Jets, Dolphins, and a few shitty teams like that going forward. Uh, Houston. On the road at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, four-point home favorites. Houston is 0-4 straight up and against the spread as an underdog. They're allowing 198 rushing yards per game. Mind you, they have played two of the best teams in the NFL. In my opinion, the two best teams in the NFL, hands down. Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, the Monday Nighter, Kansas City, Baltimore. That has been the schedule for Houston so far. Pittsburgh's number one run D versus the 30th. Ranked rushing offense in Houston. Houston has the number three passing defense versus Pittsburgh's 10th ranked passing offense. Pittsburgh 1-4 and four against the spread at home in September. They're 4-2 and two straight up and against the spread versus Houston. Um, I like Pittsburgh to win this game, but I see this more as a field goal game. I think four points is a little too much. Houston has played two really good teams, so until they play... Teams that I think are more on par with them, like the Pittsburgh Steelers and, and teams as such. I think these two teams are a little more evenly matched. I see this field goal win in Pittsburgh's favor with Houston covering the spread. 
we go on to the LA Rams at the Buffalo Bills. Bills, two and a half point home favorites. The Rams just absolutely destroyed the Eagles, made it look like a col top college school playing against a bad high school team last week. Sean McVay has his team rolling so far this year, but you also got to give credit to the Bills. The Bills are rolling as well. Stats on these two teams. The Rams, 5-1-1 one one against the spread. 2-4 and four straight up and against the spread versus Buffalo, however. But the Rams, they are 10-1 straight up in September. Injuries of note, left guard Joe Noteboom. That could be a key injury for the, the Rams on their O-line there. Watch out for that in the injury report updates on Friday. Buffalo, they're 10-1 straight up as favorite. 6-2 straight up and against the spread versus the Rams. Josh Allen leads the league with 729 passing yards. He has six TD passes with zero interceptions so far. The kid is playing well. The acquisition of Stefan Diggs has really opened up the offense for him. It's opened up the field, sorry, for him, which has allowed the offense to get rolling. And Josh Allen, he can use his legs as well. I, th I think it was such a great pickup by the Bills. I like them to win this game and cover the spread quite e well not easily I like them to win by four to six points right in that trap number next Las Vegas six and a half point road dogs in New England New England 19 five and one straight up verse Las Vegas D for New England has been a big question mark with shedding players on D with the coronavirus outbreak and pandemic with players opting out of the season there's a lot of players who have opted out for a lot of teams seem to really affect new england's d the combination of those two things uh las vegas 4-0 against spread after scoring 30 plus points which they did in a very impressive win over the new orleans saints but are the saints what they've shown us on the field or what our minds tell us the Saints should be with players like Kamara and Drew Brees etc on the team we'll get to them a little later uh Derek Carr Cam Newton in this one which D steps up to me is going to be the key this is going to be another close game I think I don't see this being more than a three or four point game hey I like New England Cam Newton to pull it off what he did against Seattle come up just short now how many times do you see Cam Newton not get a a goal line rushing TD when he tries. I like New England to win Vegas to cover in this game here. San Fran, four point road favorites at New York to play the Giants. They're in New York at the same stadium to play a New York football team for second week in a row on the road in the Eastern time zone. However, the Giants, three and seven straight up first, or San Fran, sorry, is three and seven straight up versus the Giants. They're 15 and five in their last 20 straight up overall though. Injuries of note, San Fran really got hit with the injury bug last week. Defensive tackle, Solomon Thomas, defensive end, Nick Bosa, QB, Garoppolo. Uh, and you got Mostart, running back Mostart, who leads the team not only rushing yards, but pass or receiving yards as well when he got injured. And I believe that still stands at the conclusion of their second week's game. New York Giants, Saquon Barkley, wow, what a loss for the Giants. Their only really shining star. Saquon Barkley, gone, what a brutal injury that was early in, what was that, early in the second quarter, I believe, of that game. Um, the Giants, Sterling Shepard, also another key player to watch on the injury reserve, on the injury report coming out on Friday. That should be the final one of the week, like usual. Uh, San Fran, I like them to roll. I, I don't care about the injuries. I think they're a much better football team on both sides of the ball. Special teams, you can throw in all three aspects and phases of the game. The 49ers should take this one. The Giants have been losing. Just bad football team, bad offensive line play. 49ers win this one going away. Tennessee, two and a half point favorites at Minnesota to play the Vikings. Vikings are allowing QBs to complete 73.9% of their passing attempts. Does not bode well. Thankfully, Tennessee not really a big passing team. They are a running team, however. Um, Minnesota, 9-4 straight up versus Tennessee. Injuries to linebacker Anthony Barr to keep an eye out for Minnesota. Tennessee, 1-6 straight up and 2-5 against the spread versus Minnesota. 5-1 straight up in their last six games. However, Tennessee has been rolling. They rolled, got on a streak late. Uh, Derrick Henry last year rolled into the playoffs, got knocked out. Uh, 
in a bit of a disappointing way in my opinion but that's because i kind of like tennessee a little bit as well tennessee baltimore kansas city i like all three of those teams but whatever i like tennessee to go in and dominate minnesota i like them to win by around a touchdown so i'm going to take them to win and cover the little two and a half points the Washington football team in Cleveland to play the Browns. Browns 0-5 against the spread in their last five. 1-5 straight up versus Washington. Washington on the flip side though is 1-5 straight up on the road. 1-4 against the spread in their last five. 1-5 straight up in their last six games. Two football teams that I'm not really big on. I'll take the home team to win the game. The road team to cover. So that's Cleveland to win. Washington to cover the spread. On to the next. Carolina plus 6.5. LA Chargers, minus six and a half point. Home favorites, Carolina, big, big blow. McCaffrey gone, four to six weeks. Even if he comes back early, still four weeks without. McCaffrey is huge, huge for the Panthers. What a big blow. They're 0-10 straight up in their last 10 games. 5-1 straight up and against the spread versus the Chargers, however. But they're also 0-6-1 against the spread in their last seven games. I mentioned the McCaffrey injury already. They're also 6-12 and 12 against the spread in week three are the Panthers. The Chargers, they're 1-6 and six straight up and 2-5 and five against the spread at home. Injury news, Tyrod Taylor, watch out for him. There was a bit of a mishap with, uh, I, I can't remember what it was, but it was something with the doctor trying to give him an injection to do with his rib cage, I believe. I could be wrong on that. I hope I'm remembering it correctly, so watch out there. But I like the Chargers to win this game and cover the spread at home. Caroline, I don't know what to make of them, as I've been saying all year. The New York Jets on the road in Indy. Indy is 11 and a half point home favorites. The Jets are 1 and 7 against the spread in September. 4 and 1 straight up and against the spread versus Indy. They're 3 and 13 straight up on the road. They have lost both their games this year by double digits so far. They've been hit with the injury bug as well. Perryman, McGovern, like the list goes on. Le'Veon Bell, like there are number 30 passing yards per game, number three rushing yards per game. Uh, Indy, number one passing D yards per game, number five rush D yards per game. Injuries, Paris Campbell, Malik Hooker, watch out for them too on the injury report on Friday. I don't care. Jets have lost both games by double digits. Nothing's going to change in week three. Indy, the Colts, they will roll. Phillip Rivers will cruise to a victory this week. Dallas on the road to play Seattle. The Cowboys coming off that incredible, just incredible fucking comeback. Dak Prescott, what, first QB in NFL history with over 400 passing yards and what, three rushing touchdowns. Phenomenal performance. I can't believe it, but what, why were you down 29 to the Falcons or whatever the fuck it was to begin with? Like, something is going on in Dallas. Something isn't quite right. I think we all knew or a lot of it, or at least I felt Dallas's defense was a big question mark. They were going to be the bottom 10 in the league on defensive side of the ball, whether offense should be top two, top three is kind of how I was looking at it, which will win out in the end. Will their number, will a top three offense be able to make up for such a bad defense? Don't think it would help them in the playoffs, but I thought the regular season, it would at least be enough to get them to that 10, 11 games. Now I'm really questioning. I don't think an NFC East team is going to win seven games this year with the way the four teams have started off playing and the injuries that a couple teams have accumulated thus far. I think the the Cowboys have eight starters on the injury re, on the injured reserve list. The, the Eagles have seven or something. I, I, like the list is long for all of them as well. Uh, Seattle six and zero versus the NFC East straight up. Dallas one and four straight up on the road, two and five against the spread, and two and four straight up versus Seattle. I think that Dallas's big comeback last week against a bad football team who's notoriously chokes in recent years and recent memory. I think Seattle's dominance at home in September. Pete Carroll, he's gonna have this team ready. I think Seattle wins this game, but I do think Dallas is way too good to be blowing out be blowing out i apologize for that so i will take dallas to cover seattle to win detroit on the road in arizona arizona five and a half point home favorites they're nine one against spread at home versus detroit five and two against the spread versus detroit in their last seven detroit two and eleven against the spread oh and ten straight up oh and six against the spread on the road and they are two seven and one straight up versus arizona i'm gonna take arizona Kyler Murray, Hopkins, and the crew 
to roll Detroit over by at least 10 points this week. I like Arizona to win and cover big time. Tampa Bay, six-point road favorites in Denver. Injuries to watch out for Drew Locke, Cortland Sutton for the Broncos. They went down last week. Denver is the only NFL team Tom Brady has a losing record against. He is 8-9. and nine. And he is 1-3 and three in the playoffs, I believe, 7-6 and six in the regular season versus the Broncos. Uh, Tampa Bay 1-4 straight up at Denver. 0-7 oh, against the spread in Week 3s are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Broncos are 13-3 straight up at home in September. Good September team. 4-0 oh, straight up versus Tampa. 7-2 straight up versus Tampa all time. Uh, injured. I already mentioned the injury reports. Tampa Bay... Tom Brady, TB, NTB, for the Super Bowl, NTB, it's not going to be, but Tampa Bay should get the win, Denver should get the cover here, I, actually no, I'm going to flip that, I'm picking Denver as the upset, that's my upset pick this week, is the Denver Broncos over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <clears throat> Green Bay at New Orleans, Aaron Rodgers versus Drew Brees, Brees has won two straight in this series, I, Against the spread and straight up. First Rodgers, that is. Breeze is 3-2 and two overall versus Rodgers. Green Bay is 6-1 and one against the spread in September. 5-1 and one against the spread on turf, where this game will be played. Watch out for Devontae Adams, as he got hurt last week. Uh, New Orleans coming off that loss to the Raiders. Uh, are, are we living on memories? Do we want New Orleans to be this good? Are they really past their prime now? What's going on? I really don't know what to make of the Saints right now. After last week, Green Bay, like if I'm using my eyes, Green Bay wins this one by a touchdown. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna base it off what I've seen on the field from these two teams through two weeks of the season, be it a small sample size, but you got two great quarterbacks going head to head. I will take the team that's been rolling right now with the two Aarons, Aaron Jones and Aaron Rodgers. Green Bay will win and cover this game. The Monday Nighter, the game of the week. Some might argue it, but in my mind, like I said earlier, the two best teams in the NFL this year, Kansas City at Baltimore. Baltimore 6-1 against the spread, 1-3 straight up, and against the spread versus Kansas City. Though, Kansas City 10-1 against the spread, 10-0 no straight up in their last 10 and 11 games. They're 7-1 straight up on the road, 11-2 against the spread in September. You can go on and on with stats of these two teams. Everybody knows how good these two teams are. I think the only difference in this game is going to come down to the defenses. And I think Baltimore has a fair amount of an edge on the defensive side of the ball. I will pick Baltimore to win this game by a field goal. So therefore, Kansas City covers that three and a half points. Those are my week three picks. Peace.